What's up, Joe in Vegas? Doing another review. Uh, Morrissey. This is a weird one. This is an interesting one. I feel that for some reason Morrissey is a... I don't know what the word is. Polarizing? He, he's like the Donald Trump of music. I think you either love him or you hate him. And I, that's always been my experience with Morrissey. I think... You know, when you meet someone who's into Morrissey, they'll tell you straight up, oh, I've seen him 47 times in 37 countries, blah, blah, blah. I love it. They know every word to every Morrissey song, every Smith song. They fucking love Morrissey. And if you talk to someone who doesn't really care or know his music, like me, it's like, meh, eh, no, no, no. Doesn't, doesn't really do it for me. Not my thing. No, no hate. I don't know if it's hate. Yeah, I guess there is hate. There's some people that just, I don't fucking like Morrissey. It's too sad. It's too kitschy. You know, but it's a really interesting thing. So, I think I'm going to split this review for the first time. This is an exclusive. First time, I'm going to split it into two reviews. I'm going to review my opinion of Morrissey's music, and then I'm going to do a review of the actual concert. So, my history with Morrissey, you know, music's a funny thing. I always tell people, if for whatever reason you didn't have an older brother or a parent or a girlfriend or boyfriend that slipped a certain band into your music playlist, your life playlist as a kid, and you just missed it, you won't discover it until the 20 or 30s. A good example is if you grew up listening to rock and roll, and your older brother was a rock and roll guy, and your girlfriend liked rock and roll, but for some reason no one ever slipped Beatles into your little world, sometimes it'll take you to your 20s to discover it and say, holy shit, what the fuck was that? It just is not part of your lingo. It happened with me with Bob Dylan. I didn't find Bob Dylan until I was maybe 20 or 19, and then I fucking loved Bob Dylan, but nobody in my universe was listening to Dylan. So for me personally, Smiths and Morrissey, I don't know how, I don't know why, it just never made it into my mix of music of my childhood and music of my life. And for that reason, by the time it came around to the 20s, I just couldn't adapt. I would hear a Smith song or Morrissey song, and I just said, eh, boring, I don't know. It's got a little 80s ting to it, which is nice, and you can hear, like, the biggest hit and be like, oh, that's that's not a bad song. But when you start, when, for me, for me, and I know people are going to fucking kill me for this, but like I said, it's a Trump thing. It's, it's his, He's a polarizing guy. Right now, there's some fucking emo kid that just started crying listening to this because... They're getting really upset and triggered and hurt that I don't like Morrissey music. To me, it mostly sounds the same. I'm sorry, it just does. The, most of the songs sound the same. I didn't go see him for the first time uh, probably till about five, six years ago. I have friends in L.A. who are these Morrissey guys. They've seen him 60, 70 times. They love him. They, and they don't look like Morrissey people. They, they look like regular guys, but they just fucking love Morrissey. And they look at me like I'm a fucking zombie asshole alien for not liking Morrissey. They can't even register in their brain, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? It's just, it is what it is. So they took me to a show about five, six years ago here at the Joint, and I can honestly say in my entire life, I think that's the first show I ever walked out of. Now, I think the reason was, it was general mission. I was standing up, I was tired, I think it was, I don't know, maybe it was the weather was off, the people around us were annoying, I think I was in a bad mood because I, I lost gambling before. Just it, just the stars were not aligned, and four or five songs in, I was just like, "Nah, this is just boring." And he was flashing the dead animals behind the fucking thing, and it just didn't work for me. And I left, and it stuck with me. I didn't like more. I just don't like him. It's just not my thing. So my friends came in. He's got his new residency at Caesar's Palace. It's, if you haven't been there, you're gonna love it. It's it's such a great venue. It's one of the better venues, if not. Top, top two or three venues in Vegas. Easy to get in. Most seats have great views. It's a big stage, so it's a big, just a big, cool place. To, it's fucking expensive. Just keep that in mind if you're ordering drinks or snacks or something. It's off the charts. But <clears throat> um, they came in. I wanted to hang out with my friends, so I, I took one for the team. I said, all right, I'm going to go back. I'm going to give Morrissey a Becca second shot. This time I had a seat, and this time I, I, I'll, I'll be a lot more comfortable. So, this is where the review is going to split in two. As far as my take on Morrissey and his music, I'm still not such a fan. It was better. I, I was more open to it. Maybe I had high, higher expectations last time because they talked him up so much. This time I had no expectations. Terrible expectation. And this time was better. It was better. But I still kind of felt that a lot of the music sounded the same. I, I don't know. It just doesn't 
click for me, and that's cool. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's it's there's people who don't like rap, and there's people who love rap, and there's people who don't like country, and people, and just Morrissey for me doesn't click. So on a music scale, I would give the guy a six point five out of ten for my opinion of his music. Now. And, do, and that doesn't mean he's not a talented guy. He's a very talented guy. He's got a great voice. He's got a great look. He's got a great style to him. It just doesn't click for me. Now, for showmanship and for concerts, at the end of the day, you look around that room and the people fucking love it. I'm going to say this, and don't get mad at me. It was a Friday night in Las Vegas. Vegas has been booming. That place was a third empty, which I was shocked about. That is... The most empty show I've seen since COVID. And I don't know why. I had my whole row was empty. Don't know why. I don't know if it was after July 4th weekend. I don't know if it's the economy. It's starting to catch up now and things are slowing down. But I was shocked at how empty that was. And I, as much as I want to say it's Morrissey, I don't think it was. I think because the strip itself seemed empty last night. So I hope these are not hard times coming. Um, but And it's just a fluke weekend. But it was kind of empty. So... As a concert, I look around and I see my friends who've been there, who've been there 50 times, and they are loving it. They are crying. Their mascara is falling down their face. <laughs> everybody, everybody in the crowd was in fucking heaven. And you know what? That's what it's all about. That's what concerts are supposed to do to you. If you don't like the guy, don't go. I go because I do these reviews, and I go because I like getting in the house, and I do have an appreciation for music, and I do love exploring new music. Whether it's for me or not, that's a different story, but I'll give everybody a shot, even two shots in this case. But if you're a Morrissey fan, it's an incredible concert. He, he I'm going to go through the set list in a second. It's getting kind of long, but... You're going to love it. He changes the set list a lot. You don't know what's coming. He throws little hints for you. There's people that are giving him gifts on stage like he's the fucking Pope. Someone, I think, put a baby up. No, I'm joking. They didn't. They didn't. I, I could see it. If someone handed him a baby from the crowd, I, I think I think it would be normal. I don't think anybody would, would, you know, he had one song, I believe it's Jack the Ripper. I'll talk about him on the set list, where I guess it's a known thing where fans jump out of the stage and fucking try to tackle him and hug him and all the security it's like kind of stage but it's kind of cool i thought it was neat it's like a real love fest his fans love him and he plays for them and he sings for them and fuck man that's what it's all about you know all right let me go through the set list so he started with with the one song that i knew it was suede head uh that i don't think he's played the last few weeks so uh he just that's what i'm saying he's that kind of guy i'm gonna throw my biggest hit out randomly number one song first song i'm going to come out with so that was cool uh then he played our frank we hate it when our friends become successful billy bud now these kind of sounded familiar to me i don't know why i don't know if it's just because the last few weeks i knew i was seeing morrissey so i was trying to listen to some songs or i remember them from from back in the day billy bud knockabout world i am veronica rebels without applause every day is like sunday which i kind of knew that one i think that's like one another one of his bigger like radio hits uh half a person which was a smith song uh he does a couple of them uh the loop i live in oblivion little man what now no one had no one ever which is also a smith song uh bonfire of teenagers i remember that that was a ballad i thought that was a pretty good song actually sure enough the telephone rings first of the gang to die irish blood english heart jack the ripper <clears throat> that was the song where where it was just this red light it was cool it was cool production value was cool that was a song where everybody was running on stage and, and, and just, like, sacrificing themselves to him like he was a god. I mean, it was cool. I've never seen You know what? I've never seen that before. I'm all for originality. Uh, I'll have some pictures in the, that I'll post that, that came out pretty cool. Very cool stuff. And then he did his encore, How Soon Is Now, which is a, a Smith song. So, <clears throat> it was a lot better than the first time. I, I was dreading it. I almost didn't go. I figure, fuck it, I'm eating my friends for dinner. I might as well just go. The tickets were not expensive. He's, he, I think he does that on purpose. They were like 60 bucks. I had great seats. <clears throat> for a non-Morrissey fan who doesn't know any songs, I'm, it's not bad. If you're happy to be out, if you go to a lot of concerts, then yeah, you might get a little bored in the middle. But if you never go to concerts and you're out and your friends are going to Morrissey and you're like, fuck it, I'll go, you'll have a good time. It's music. It's not bad music. It's just not my for me. But for a concert, you know, he's got really interesting pictures flashing behind. He plays a lot of tribute to Frank Sinatra and the, 
the New York Dolls and, and, and David Bowie, and he's got these, you know, flash, these old-timey, you know, actors and actresses and from back in the day. He, he could tell he's got an artistic soul. He does, and it's, it comes out in his music, and it comes out in the way he moves and the way he performs, and that's awesome. And who the fuck am I to knock on that? Why would anybody knock on that? And I, I kind of feel bad that in the past I would tell people, ah, fuck Morrissey, I went to that show, it sucked. I don't know, I think I was just cranky that night. I just think I was in a bad mood. Uh, for a concert itself, this is just the concert part, not how I feel about the music. I, I'd probably give it like an 8.35 out of 10, because I think if, you don't, if you're not a fan... You, you, you'll have a good time. If you're a fan, I think you get 9.8 for every show he does. I think he, he's playing to you. I think he knows his lane. He's playing to you. His shows are filled with people who've seen him 30, 40, 50 times. Hey, that's a testament to him, and that's a testament to his music. So how the fuck can I rip on that? If there's 2,000 people last night that are so happy and in heaven, and I promise you those 2,000 people are going back tonight. That's the way his fans are. They're like... You know, the Grateful Dead, and they're like, uh, um, who did I just see? Uh, God, I forgot their fucking names. Uh, whatever, these jam bands that everybody kind of follows. Fish and uh, Warp, not Warp, what the fuck were their names? God, I forgot. I can't believe I don't remember their names. Anyway, uh, it's like Fish, it's like Dead. He's got a following of people who've seen him multiple, multiple, multiple times. And Widespread Panic, that's what it was. I saw them pretty recently. Same idea. They don't. They play two, three nights in a weekend, and their fans fly in, and they go to all two, three nights. That's Morrissey. And good for him, and good for the fans. And they found something they love, awesome. I'm happy for you. So, those are my reviews. He's just, it's not music that I would listen to, or rock out to, or put on when I'm working. But that's me. But it's not terrible music. And people love it, and he makes people happy, and he makes people dance, and God bless him for that. How can you hate someone who does that to people? So, that's my review. I'll see you at the next show. I'm going to see Black Keys tonight, so should have a review for that tomorrow. I've never seen them. Thanks for listening if you made it this far. I'm sorry if I've said anybody. Just, just, I'm allowed to not like certain styles of music. I don't care. I can go see Kanye. I, I respect Kanye. I like his music. Uh, but it's not anything I would be like, hey, I'm going to go put on some Kanye. But I respect him, and I think Morrissey's going to be the same for me. Not my style of music, not bad music, but it's a good show, and he makes people happy. And What else can you ask for in this miserable fucking world? Right? Exactly. Thanks for listening. Subscribe, comments, try to be nice. Don't beat me up too bad, but I want to hear what your thoughts are. I'll see you at the next show. Thanks. Bye-bye.